Good morning, everybody. It brings me great joy to address you all this morning. <clears throat> I'm currently in Karnataka, where my parents are. It's quite pleasant out here. It's all green around. Um, I live in Mumbai, but uh, just come down for a short while. And it's quite refreshing. And by the time you see this recording, I'm again back in Mumbai. So this morning I uh, want to leave a small thought with you as to Am I living in defeat? Am I living in defeat? So we will uh, look at Colossians chapter 2 verses uh, 14 and 15. Blotting out the handwriting ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way nailing it to his cross and having spoiled principalities and powers he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it i'd like to contrast this with uh, in a couple of real life incidents and um encourage you so there was this uh, japanese intelligence officer his name was hiru Unoda. Hiro Onoda was sent to serve in the Philippines uh, by the Japanese and two years into the war they had to surrender. The Japanese had to surrender because the Americans had taken over the fort. But Hiro Onoda did not surrender. He kept fighting that battle for about you know, 29 years hence. People tried to coax him out of coming out of that war saying it is done it is finished you do not have to fight this war they sent him handouts from you know the air uh, encouraging him to you know give up his arms and come out okay surrender but Unuda kept fighting his battle that's remarkable he fought a battle that wasn't even there for a full 29 years. Now, I'm not saying in any way that a battle does not exist for all of us. There is a battle, but remember this, my friends. The requirement of the battle has already been nailed to the cross. It's been paid for, it's done, it's finished. Which will lead us to the second illustration that I have, or second anecdote that I have. So, I saw this on uh, Reinhard Bonke. Reinhard Bonke was invited to a live a television show where he was asked to expound on the benefits of being a Christian, okay, or benefits of Christian living. Alongside way, they wanted to bring. Uh, a critic in the form of an atheist and uh, he wasn't aware but uh, Reinhard Bonke in his own words says uh, he was up for it because he liked a good fight and <coughs> at that time the atheist posed him a question saying Bonke you see there is power in the blood of Jesus I don't think it is because the power of the, the blood of Jesus has been the year uh, has been in the world since 2000 years ago but the world has become worse off than it was when Jesus actually shed his blood on the cross so Reinhard Bonke in response says just because there is soap in the world it does not make one clean. You can even be working in a soap factory and still be dirty. You only become clean when you apply the soap. Okay, and then you become clean. How profound that is. That's, that's the blood of Jesus. Okay, you do not have, you and I do not have, okay, to live in defeat. We, we apply the blood of Jesus to our lives. There is power in the blood of Jesus. 
is the he was without blemish he was without spot okay his he's an incorruptible seed we were redeemed with an incorruptible seed none of these corruptible things can affect us because we have been redeemed with the incorruptible seed but here is what you have to do i will lead to the third anecdote that i have i told you i am in karnataka with my parents my mom grows a lot of hens and chicks and roosters here there are about 60 70 of them i don't know i don't have an exact number but there are that many so about last thursday um so at the time of this recording uh, it's about tuesday so last thursday about a week ago um my mom calls me and says hey come there is a snake here and then i go i pick a stick that was handed out to me i hit it on its head and the, and the snake is done it's it's dead but there's more to the story i asked my mom how did you spot a snake it's all green it's all muddy around how did you even spot the snake so my mom said i was just out here and i saw all the hens gathered together in a huddle and there were little chicks in the huddle and there were roosters also then all of them were in the huddle and they kept mumbling something they were all together yeah. and they were mumbling something as though they were speaking to that snake and the snake didn't move it lay there and that was one of the reasons i was able to take the stick and in a knock it on its head but the important or the more interesting aspect of this conversation that i had with my mother is this she said there was a little chick the most tiniest one of the whole bunch it had also raised its head and intently looked at the snake and started mumbling something as though it was saying something to the snake my oh my i am excited by what i just heard my mother say okay so it's like you know you can be a tiniest chick in the kingdom of god but he has armed you with this word you know, to look at the serpent that is around you okay that serpent is already toothless according to colossians 2 14:15 you only speak the word of god and then fight your battle you apply the precious blood of God to your situations you do not have to live in defeat just because a snake comes you don't run you hit the snake there is power in the word of God every every word of God is breathed by him for our reproof for, for our correction for our guidance and it is sharper than a two edged sword and they are using it against an enemy that has already been toothless his tooth has been removed and he's got no power over your life you only believe john 14:1 and 2 do not let your hearts be troubled believe in god believe also in me he says this in response to peter's question of where you go and jesus tells him where i go you cannot come and peter says lord i will go with you to the very end okay and jesus tells him you will deny me three times but do not let your guard down do not let your hearts be troubled believe in the power of the resurrection the holy spirit that raised jesus from the dead is now in each and every one of us you take the word you study the word for you are birthed of water and the spirit water of the word and the spirit of the living god use this authority my friends you do not have to walk around in defeat anymore it is okay the past is done it is under the blood move forward live a life victorious for christ i have been guilty of this many times but i have been encouraged by what god had shown me through these you know three incidents or three anecdotes it's amazing 
and there is there are enough scriptures that say or point in the direction that we do not have to live in defeat study the word chew on it pray in the spirit i'll tell you you will live a victorious life that is what we are all called to do live victoriously my friends live in the victory christ has called you to we are sons and daughters of the most high god we have received a spirit of adoption and god has given us a spirit of love and of a sound mind not a spirit of fear perfect love casts out all fear my friends trust in god trust in his promises and live in victory because if you hear all that he has to say and still you know live in fear it speaks a lot about our faith yeah we don't want to be reprimanded oh you of little faith we we'll ask god to strengthen our faith he will he will begin he who began a good work in us is able to finish what he started in us he's faithful he's the author he's the perfecter and he's the finisher of our salvation our hope is not in vain be encouraged my friends god bless you all